This time on Pedalbox, it's cold, dark and wet outside, so we're working indoors getting rid of our horribly, horribly broken wheel bearings so that when the weather's a bit nicer, the car's actually nicer to drive. We've known for quite a while that these wheel bearings need to be changed and we've just been putting it off and putting it off because disassembling all the suspension and everything else and then fighting them out is going to be an absolute nightmare and really we need a press to do it. But we're going to see how far we can get because one thing we don't have in this garage is a press. We do have a pipe bender that we thought we might be able to get away with using but unfortunately we just can't fit the hubs in around the framework for holding the dies for the pipe so that is a non-starter so we're going to have to get these pressed out properly and the new ones put in which is probably for the best because I don't fancy my chances being able to accurately press a new bearing into this housing in here without one. So we've already disassembled as you can see from this massive pile of parts all of the suspension and brake components from the front and the rear hubs and it reminds me just how terrible these things are. The uh, unsprung mass on these trailing arms is absolutely horrendous. These things weigh, I think we measure them at about 25 kilos all up with the discs and the calipers on and everything else. It's, it's just horrendous. If there was something I could change, I would almost certainly build some box section trailing arms to try and fit that. So that might be something for the far, far, far future once this thing's actually done and driving because I don't want to make myself another job that stops me having fun in it right now. So we need to get, first of all, the actual hub flange itself that the wheel bolts onto out from the bearing, which should be as easy as just knocking the centre section out. Obviously these bearings are shot, so we don't particularly care that they are going to be destroyed in this process. Once we've got them off, we can then take these reluctor rings off the back because we do not have ABS, therefore we do not need ABS rings on our wheels. So we'll get these knocked out and then see about trying to get the rest of the bearing out from the rest of these castings. So to get the bearing out, we need to remove the hub first because the hub hides the snap ring that holds the bearing in. And we can't get the bearing out without getting to the snap ring, without getting to the hub, and the hub is held in by the bearing, and this becomes a very circular process very, very quickly. So this is going to be some destructive disassembly because we need to punch this hub off to get to that snap ring. Now there is an, if we hold this up, the correct way up like that. There is an outer race that holds the hub on, a set of bearings, an inner race, and then another set of bearings, and then an inner race from that that holds everything together in very broad terms. So if we remove one set, we knock the outer race off, we'll release the bearings, but we can also then get to the snap ring. And we're going to do that on the rear first because it is probably the most awkward to do for no other good reason than it is an extremely large, heavy chunk of metal. I'm going to do that using the portable dynamic press, which is a lump hammer, a 23mm socket and a half inch extension bar. And because when you hit chrome vanadium, it can shatter and explode like a bullet, I'm actually going to use some, uh, some eye protection for this where I wouldn't normally because I'm going to be hitting this very, very hard. And I've already been to eye casualty once this month, as has Chris. And you can see that outermost race actually hasn't come off on this one. It's come off really cleanly all the way from the center of the hub, which is great. That's really, really good news because that's extremely difficult to get off. I was expecting to have to use a puller to try and remove it out, which I guess that's a massive win. Uh, hopefully all of the others are going to go exactly as smooth as that. So we'll get the other hubs off and we can get rid of these reluctor rings and then start looking at the inner. So this is that outermost race that I was explaining before, which I expected to stay stuck on the hub. And you can see this one where it didn't. So we're gonna have to remove this from here and probably a couple more of these as well. So you can see the bearings inside now. 
Obviously it's still held in a little bit by the seal and this is the snap ring that we need to remove. Now the problem here is the snap ring has rusted itself in or one way or another it is completely stuck. So we're gonna have to piecemeal this out. Oh. Safe to say that spring clip is definitely not going to work anymore. That was a real fight to get it out. It is almost pretzeled, so that's no good, but you can now see what's left in the rest of it. That is one of the bearing racers, which I'm not going to touch because it's covered in grease, and there is a little rubber seal that goes over the top. That can go, not in my coffee, can go over there. And that's what's left inside. We need to remove all of this. You can see there's still one race on the inside. And that's what we're hopefully going to use to push the rest of this bearing out through the front of the hub. So here's the bearing that was left intact when we removed the hub. You can see the inner race is missing. It's still installed here. And you can see there is a reasonable amount of movement laterally, sort of outwards from the hub on that bearing. That's the snap ring that should have come out in one piece, which obviously very much didn't on some of the others. And normally some of that play would be taken up by the drive shaft coming through the center and a nut going on and then pinching together and that would hold some of this play. Now I'm not sure how much of that is normal that we're seeing here and how much is because there is wear in the bearing and it does need to be replaced but one way or another these bearings are very definitely coming out. So we have to remove this bearing and unfortunately because we don't have a press the only way that we've worked out that we can try and do it is to use a big flat plate across like that and then try and pull the bearing through which would normally work but unfortunately we'll end up with this bearing flush with the outer edge of the hub around here and then we won't be able to remove it anymore. The professional way to do it is you have a big cylinder that almost looks like a large um, turbo socket for an impact that sits on to the right size and you can pull the whole bearing up and out through it. The other way is you chock this down here and then you just push the bearing out with a nice big press. Obviously we don't have the press, we don't have the nice big tool, so this is almost as far as we can get for tonight. The last thing we're going to do is get rid of these reluctor rings. You can see we've taken one off, we just went through it with a nice big wide drill just to pop through all of the welds and they are just where these little dimples are inside here. So we just whiz all of these off and then we have our hubs almost ready to go back on. That's all of the ABS rings removed, so all of our hubs are now clean, which is great. We also managed to get rid of all of the bearing races as well, although we did not do it the proper way because we don't have a bearing race puller. We tried using our regular puller and there wasn't enough space behind the bearing to actually get a good enough purchase. Every time you talked it, it just popped off and released. So we ended up using an angle grinder, cutting a little slot into it, and then basically drifting it off the end, which is not the best way to do it. It takes a lot of time, a lot of patience, and you have to be very, very careful, which is basically why there's no video of it, because we would have sat here for half an hour and you would be bored watching it. So we now have four really nice looking hubs. We've cleaned them up and they're not perfect by any stretch, but they are perfect for what we need. And that is to go back into our hubs. So here we are three months later, just like the last episode, we started shooting this late last year and it is now March. So we're gonna do a bit of a catch up here as much for our good as for you. So we've got the trailing arm, we've rebuilt it completely. We've got all the brake hoses, we've got the handbrake cable on. We've got the new bearing that we pressed in down at Ignition Motorsport. So thank you, Colin, for the use of your press and your shop space. And now the next thing to do on this is sorting out our handbrake cable. Now, a few episodes ago, quite a lot of episodes ago, we put these in and a few people noticed that where the handbrake cable came round from inside the engine bay here to go forward into the tunnel to attach the handbrake lever, this is a very sharp bend around the, uh, around the sort of upright, around the corner of the body in there. So to protect it, uh, Adrian has designed and 3D printed a couple of little sleeves that this will fit inside of 
and it kind of widens out the radius of the bend and also kind of holds the Bowden in place so that hopefully any friction on here isn't just going to rub through one small part of the Bowden. So this is like a nice conduit there and this is going to fit around that little upright that we've got inside the back of the chassis. So we've got another one for the other side as well. And we're going to pop those on soon. Just thought I'd show you that off the car because obviously camera doesn't work too well under there. And that leaves us now with the only thing we have to do before we put this back on is finish up our coilovers. So the trailing arm here is pretty much kind of upside down. So this hole here is at the bottom of it and is where the coilover attaches to. So this is the bottom of the coilover here and you get one bolt in shear running the whole way through. This is the OEM way of doing it. I think it's kind of weird, but is what it is. And then normally you've got the anti-roll bar even further in on that bolt. The problem with trying to put this all together right now is that these are not Audi TT coilovers. This is a 12 mil hole and that is a 14 mil hole. So the two do not go together. The bolt that fits here doesn't fit here. So we've got a master plan. We thought we would simply pop this in a press and punch that sleeve out of it. Unfortunately, having gone hammer and tongs at it and put quite a few tons of force on it, we cannot get it to budge at all. So our guess is that the metal sleeve is actually bonded into the rubber. So we've gone for a slightly more brute force fallback plan. We are just going to pop it in the milling machine and send a 14 mil drill all the way through it and just punch the, punch the bore out to where it needs to be. Now you may worry, what happens if we eat this sleeve down so much that it like falls out or breaks or something? Thankfully, it is a three mil wall thickness of it. So you've got an 18 mil outer diameter with a 12 mil hole in the middle. So it's three millimeters of metal all the way around the side. And when it's only going out to 14, it still leaves two mil. So as long as we get it centered, there's actually still quite a lot of material left. And if the drill bites it and like twists it out, well, that will have broken the adhesive. And then we can just push it out and push a new sleeve that we have ready to go in, in its place. Sorry, bolts are just rolling around down there. So if that falls out, we can put that in and we're all good. And if it doesn't fall out, we'll have bored it out and we're all good. So we kind of win either way. Unfortunately, though, you're going to have to wait for the next episode working on this car to see that because in typical pedal box fashion, despite this having been a three month hiatus for us to get to here, we haven't ordered the 14 mil drill that we need to punch that hole out. So next time you'll see us do that. And until then, make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring the bell down there so that you don't miss it. See how I did that? Like the video if you liked it. Leave a comment down below if you didn't like anything that we did here. And if you want to pay for things like drill bits for us, you can jump on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show and support us there from as little as a dollar a month. Or you can jump on shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy any of the merch that, again, as usual, I am not wearing. Except through the magic of editing, I totally am. So hats, hoodies and all that sort of stuff. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.